Well, good afternoon, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in my bedroom, uh, Central California. Um, I thought I would, um, sorry, I'm, I'm recording this on a Windows surface, so I hope it's it's okay. It's an old one, too. I um, thought I'd bring you an update to last week's video where I talked about our firewall OS upgrade failure. Um, we did part two of that today. And um, too long didn't watch, uh, we were successful. But we, we, found, um, we found a problem. So let me share my screen and I'll show you what we found. And I'm gonna share this uh, really super intricate network diagram here. So try not to get lost, okay? There we go. Um, it's very complicated, try to stay with me. <laughs> So here we have our two firewalls. We've got a primary and a secondary, and they work in an active standby mode. So this is the primary is normally our active firewall. And we've got our core switch network over here. All the user switches hang off of that. Um, they're all plugged into one, one or the other of these core switches. Um, so we'll come what, normally when this guy, when this firewall here is active. Um, We'll come, the users will come in, they'll hit the firewall. Um, you know, this, this guy will give it a route. You know, how do we get to our electronic medical records provider over here? Um, it's, it's really a cloud that's got a lot of applications in it. Um, so the user fires up an application on their desktop, says, hey, I need to get to this, app, this particular address. Um, do a route look up here in the cores. Of course says, okay, it's on this VLAN. VLAN comes over here to uh, this layer three network, comes over here to the firewall primary, says, okay, it's out this interface and off you go out to the electronic medical record provider. And that, that works great. What we found out is that when we fail over to the secondary firewall here, um, these guys here lose the routes to our electronic medical records provider. Um, so they just bounce back and forth here within the cores and don't go anywhere. As soon as we fail back, the route's reestablished, hits primary firewall, sorry, and goes on to our electronic medical records provider. So, hmm, so we got we got our switching vendors on the phone. We've got our firewall vendors on the phone. And we even got our poor EMR vendors on the phone. Um, we let him go after a few minutes because we realized there's nothing wrong. Um, this circle actually has uh, a firewall and some routing, and then they've got a whole network behind it. So we got their firewall guy because uh, right here on the edge of his network, he's got two firewalls. Uh, Cisco ASA is an active and a standby. And uh, we decided real quick that we really didn't need him. So we cut him loose. But the routing was getting messed up somewhere in between the firewalls and our core switching network. Um, and we couldn't figure out what. So they asked us, go ahead and, and fail back over to the secondary, put it in the failed state. And then we ran some trace routes. Um, they looked at some log files. Um, and while they were doing that, I went ahead and upgraded the uh, primary firewall. Um, my boss's suggestion, she said, look, you know, they're, they're grabbing their data. Why don't you just go ahead and upgrade this? And my first thought was, Ew, do I really want to do that? But, you know, why not? I mean, it worked before. I already saved the config and everything. So once it rebooted, it would come up with the correct config. Um, so I upgraded that. Everything looked good. These They were still collecting data, collecting data, looking at logs, looking at logs. And then they just kind of stopped and were scratching their heads. And at that point, um, we decided, hey, you know what, let's go ahead and fail back and uh, let's show them show them it working again. And boom, as soon as we fail back to the primary, we can get to this guy again. Everything is just magically happy again. So we seem to have a routing anomaly somewhere. The thing is that drives us crazy is 
these configs on this uh, primary and uh, I keep acting like I can highlight that it's paint I can't. So these configs on the on the primary and the secondary are identical. They're exactly the same. We know that because uh, we have another device out here that you can't see. Um, let me let me draw it here real quick. It looks just like the firewalls, but it's basically um, it's it's a, a device called Panorama. I love that name. It's the Panorama for Palo Alto Networks, um, and basically this guy. Um, uh, he's just connected into our core network here. But this controls the configs of these two guys. So when we make configuration changes here, unless it's like device specific, like to in Ethernet interfaces or something like that, um, we make all config changes, routing included here in Panorama. It then pushes the changes out to both firewalls. Um, so in most cases, um, Normally, in this, um, when you have a primary and a stand, secondary active standby firewall pair, there's um, a config sync that goes on between the two. So you make a change here, it changes it over here. Um, but what Panorama does is break that, and it keeps track of the configs and sends it to this guy, and then sends it to this guy, and it keeps the configs in sync right here. So the configs are all in one place. We know they're in sync because uh, when we send them out, we can look on Panorama and it says, yeah, configs in sync on this one, configs in sync on this one. So there is something going on between either the connection between the secondary and our core switches, which we can't find any difference, or uh, the routing is we're missing a config command somewhere um, in either these two or these two. They're, the routing config might be just slightly different because um, we'll just say that the primary, let's just say it connects across core switch one, uh, that says core switch two, that's not right. Hang on, let me, let me fix that. That's not, we don't have two core switch twos. Um, what we do have <laughs> three, I uh, did it again. Don't ever get old. Um, basically, so this firewall here, let's just say primary will con connect across core switch one and three. For secondary firewall will connect across core switch two and four. And there's cross connects in turn, uh, um, between these four switches that keep them all talking to each other. Um, they exchange routing information by uh, ISIS, ISIS, intermediate system to intermediate system. Um, they exchange all their routing information they have with each other, but we're thinking maybe between these two switches and these two switches, there might be just some subtle configuration difference. Maybe a command is missing on one or the other. Um, probably on these. Um, so at this point, we don't know. We just know that as long as we run off the primary, everything works. If we fail over the secondary, everything except for our EMR provider works. Internet works, every, everything works except these guys. So to that end, when, when this thing, when we had this failed over, I did um, what they call show tech, show full tech on, on these fours um on a few other switches that they asked for um i grabbed um tech support files from both firewalls and then we failed back to the primary and i did it all over again i grabbed the, the tech supports from these switches and tech supports from these firewalls and we packaged that all up and sent it off to them so uh that's about all we can do. Uh, they've got all the log files. They're gonna be taking a look, see what they can figure out and uh, see if they can spot any smoking guns. And um, I don't know. I don't know what the, uh, what the deal was, but uh, hopefully we'll find it. But like I said, the good thing is the firewalls are all upgraded now. They're upgraded to the uh, versions that the, they should be. Um, Panorama is upgraded to the version it should be. They're all the same version. 
um, panorama and the firewalls. So uh, yeah, so one of the many things you can look forward to as a, as a net admin is uh, these kind of funny little situations where you can't really pinpoint whose fault it is. Is it Palo Alto's fault that they're not pushing the routes to the cores? Is it the switching vendor's fault that they're not advertising the routes correctly? We don't know. So everybody's going to look at their, uh, their respective tech support files and uh, we'll see what they find. So that's the end of the OS uh, firewall <laughs> operating system upgrade saga. It only took two weeks. Should only take about two hours max. As um, soon as we get this routing figured out, we'll be able to do it on the fly, you know, during working hours because there's there's generally no downtime at all when when everything works right. Like when we when we fail over from one firewall to the other, there's there's no dropping on the internet at all. All of our uh, IPsec tunnels come up. Uh, our remote on-demand VPN users don't get disconnected. Um, it just it works great, but uh, this this one little routing issue. So I, I'm confident we'll get it uh, ironed out, but it may take a while. So because I've only I'm only working three days next week. I'm taking election day off. Um, I'm going to go vote in person and uh, possibly help there with the polls. And then uh, Friday is my normally day, normal day off. I normally work Monday through Thursday, 10 hours a day. And uh, then the following two weeks, I am on vacation. So we're going to have a little lapse in the videos. If I do make a video, it's they'll be fairly short and it'll just be more like travel. Here's where we went. Um, so... It's, I shouldn't really, it is vacation. Technically it's vacation from work. Um, but basically what I am doing is I am driving to Kansas City, Missouri to bury my father. So um, not, not really a vacation, but kind of a vacation. Um, at least it's away from work. So yeah, we'll be driving out there. Uh, then we'll uh, do his internment and uh, He's being buried with full military honors, which is awesome. He deserves it. And uh, then it'll be just making our way back. Um, driving through the Colorado Rockies in the wintertime ought to be an adventure. So we'll, uh, we'll make some, I, I will, I'll make some video on the way over because uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see, but it won't be technically related. It'll just be, you know, here's what it's like. Here's what it's like to try to drive from California to Missouri in the wintertime. Technically, it's autumn here, fall, but it's going to look a lot like winter in the, in the mountains. So as always, guys, that's, uh, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all the new subscribers. I appreciate all the, uh, the Christian brothers and sisters out there. Um, I appreciate everybody out there. So uh, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, heck, click the like button. And, uh, you know, you click that bell, you'll be notified when I put out new videos. You click the subscribe button, I'll just be happy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as always, keep those great comments coming. If you have any suggestions, that's great. Send them along because uh, I learned this all on the streets. I don't have a Palo Alto certification, took a couple classes. I don't have an extreme networks certification, took a couple classes. Most of this has all been on the job training from being a, a lowly help desk tech to where I am now. So keep at it. Um, if this is the career path you want, just keep trying to learn, keep, keep trying for jobs as they come along and uh, you'll get there. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll catch you all hopefully next week. Um, God bless and everybody take care. Uh, stop.